Alright, in this video we're going to talk about concavity, um, where a graph is concave up or concave down, or neither. Um, and all concavity refers to is how a graph is basically bending. So suppose, suppose you have something that looks like a parabola pointing upwards. Um, this portion of the parabola is what we say is concave up, it's bending upwards. And then suppose I flip it so that it starts bending downwards. This portion of the graph we say is concave down because it's bending downwards. Um, and this other portion of the graph we say here the, func the graph is concave up. And mechanically to um, find where a graph is concave up or concave down it's very analogous to what you do to find where a function is increasing and decreasing except for instead of looking at the first derivative what you're going to do is you're going to look at the second derivative so let me find my example here so suppose we have this function f of x equals 2 plus 3x squared minus x cubed and we're trying to figure out where this function is concave up or concave down well, the first thing we do is take the derivative. So the derivative of 2 is 0, the derivative of 3x squared is 6x, and the derivative of negative x to the third is negative 3x squared. The next thing we do is we take the second derivative. So the second derivative is simply going to be 6 minus 6x. And just like when you're finding increasing and decreasing, you take the first derivative and you figure out where it's undefined or where it's equal to 0. Well, in this case, if we set 6 minus 6x equal to 0, we'll simply get that x equals 1. We'll add 6x and divide both sides by 6. And now the same thing. We take a number larger than 1 and we take a number smaller than 1 and we plug it back into the second derivative. So if I take a number larger than 1 and plug it into the second derivative, notice I'm going to get a negative number. And that means that your function is concave down over that interval. If I take a number smaller than 1, say 0, I'm going to get positive numbers. And that means that your graph is concave upwards on that interval. And that's basically all you have to do. You could say it's concave up on the interval negative infinity to 1, and you could say it's concave down on the interval from 1 to infinity. So let's do one a little more complicated, but the good thing is that's the basic idea. Um, the only thing that's going to get tricky on these is really just taking the first derivative and the second derivative. So suppose next I've got the function x squared minus 1 cubed. Okay, so on this one we'll have to use the chain rule to take the derivative. So the 3 comes out front, we'll leave the inside part alone, we'll take 1 away, and then we'll multiply by the derivative of the inside, which will give us 2x. And the first thing I do before taking a second derivative is I clean my first derivative up as much as possible, just with some algebra. Um, typically that'll make taking the second derivative a bit easier. All right, so I multiply the 3 and the 2x and get 6x. So now to take the second derivative, I'm going to have to use the product rule as well as the chain rule. So I'll think about the 6x as being one piece. So if I take the derivative of 6x, I'll get 6. I'll leave the x squared minus 1 squared term alone. I'll put a plus in between. Now I'll leave the 6x term alone and I'll use the chain rule on taking the derivative of the x squared minus 1 squared piece. So the 2 will come out front, I'll leave the x squared minus 1 alone, take 1 away, that'll give me to the first power, and again I'm going to have to multiply the inside by 2x. Okay, so there's my derivative using the, uh, the product rule, in this case, along with the chain rule, and I'm just taking a quick look at it, I don't think I did anything crazy on it. So again, um, at this point, we're going to have to figure out where the second derivative equals 0 or where it's undefined. So 
If you multiply this all out, it's just going to be a big polynomial, so there's nowhere where it's going to be undefined, but let's clean it up a little bit. So I've got a 6, a 2, and a 2 in my second term, so that'll give me 24. It looks like I've got an x and an x, so that'll give me x squared. And then it looks like I've got an x squared minus 1 still hanging out. And a lot of times this will be the tricky part, um, is just figuring out where this thing equals 0. And what I'm going to do is factor everything out that I can. So I notice there's a 6 and a 24. Well, that means I can factor 6 out. There's an x squared minus 1 in the first term. There's also an x squared minus 1 in the second term. You pull out the x squared minus 1 to the first power, the smaller power. And then on the inside, I'm going to be left with an x squared minus 1 term. Um, and then on the second part, it looks like we're going to be left with a 4 x squared term is all. Okay, so out front we have 6 times x squared minus 1. On the inside I've got 1x squared plus 4x squared. That's 5x squared minus 1. And again, the same thing as before. We've got to find the critical numbers. So this one's going to be a little tedious. So if we set x squared minus 1 equal to 0, we'll get that x equals positive and negative 1. You could add 1 and take the square root. Um, you could factor this as x minus 1, x plus 1. The same thing on the other part. Um, if I plug in, if I look at 5x squared minus 1 and set that equal to 0, well, I'll add the 1, divide by 5. That'll give me x squared. And then when I take the square root, I'll get positive, negative, square root of um, 1 over 5 and you can simplify the square root of 1 as 1 and I'll just leave the square root of 5 as the square root of 5. So now the last little bit is simply just doing all the sign chart stuff like in the last example. So let me copy it back down. So I've got 6, I'm going to factor it x minus 1, x plus 1, there's my 6 x squared minus 1 term. And then if I factor the other part it looks like we'll have um, square root of 5x minus 1 and square root of 5x plus 1. I don't know if this is going to help me or not, but we'll see if it does. So I'm going to put all my numbers down. I've got negative 1, positive 1, and then I have positive negative 1 over square root of 5. So here's negative 1 over square root of 5. Here's positive 1 over square root of 5. And again, I'm plugging these numbers now back into the second derivative and thinking about signs. So let's see, if I plug in something larger than 1, so equivalently I could think about the 6x squared minus 1, 5x squared minus 1 part. If I take a number larger than 1, let's say a million, well, definitely 6 really isn't going to have any effect on the sign of the second derivative. So if I take... Um, like a, what I say, a million, well that squared, the first term is going to be positive, the second term is going to be positive. So anything bigger than 1 is going to be positive, which will make our function concave up on that interval. If I take something smaller than negative 1, say a negative a million, again if you square those terms they're going to become positive. So from the interval negative infinity to negative 1 it's going to be concave up as well. Um, maybe I'll take 0 next because that looks like an easy one. If I take 0 and plug it in my second derivative, well again 6 is not going to change the sign. If I plug 0 into the first term I'll get a negative. If I plug 0 into the second term I'll get a negative. Two negatives make a positive, so it's also going to be concave up on that interval. And now I have to think about numbers between positive negative 1 over square root of 5 Yuck. Um, let's see. So, you know, at this point, you could put it into a calculator or do something like that. Um, this is where I will look at it, um, where it's factored. So, let's see. If I take positive um, 1 over square root of 5, it looks like my first term here is going to be negative. My second term will be positive. If I take something a little bit bigger than positive 1 over square root of 5, this term will be positive, and my other term will also be positive. You can check this. I'm kind of running out of time with YouTube, so I think this is going to be negative and make it concave down. 
Um, I believe the other term should also be negative, which will make that concave down. So I'll let you guys take numbers between positive, negative, between 1 over square root of 5 and 1, and negative 1 to negative 1 over square root of 5, because I'm out of time here. So sorry for the quick fix. Um, I hope this problem makes sense. If you've got any questions, just shoot me an email, and I'll be happy to answer it.